Hello and welcome to Relationship Help Lab. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler, the Relationship Help Doctor, and I've created this time for us every Tuesday at noon Pacific time so that I can answer your questions, things that are on your mind about your relationships, whether those relationships are with your partner or they are with your um, parent, your child, your teenager, <laughs> your, your co-worker. Or it could be a relationship question about your relationship with yourself. Because we're all having to learn continuously. And if we're not learning, we're not growing. And if we're not growing, it's not a great feeling. So let's be fearless and continue to grow and find solutions to things and change our mindsets, change our ideas, keep on moving. When you have a relationship with someone, particularly with your partner, someone you've made a commitment to very consciously and purposefully, someone you chose, we don't always have all the best skills. We don't know how to do it. Maybe we know how to do the romance stage, but we don't know how to do the real relationship stage. Or maybe we just have one or two little areas in which things are not working. So whatever's happening for you, this is an opportunity for you to ask questions. And hi, Sophia, I'm glad that you joined in. Um, we're going to be making lots of room for your questions, so please do put them in the chat window. Just put a forward slash Q space and then type your question and I'll be happy to answer it. It doesn't matter with whom we're talking about having a relationship. It matters that we want to be the best person we can be in any relationship. And as I was saying just a moment ago, that relationship could be with our partner, but it could also be with a parent. It could be with a child. It could be with anyone in our life for whom it would make sense for you to get information about how to do it better. So you would feel better about yourself and feel better about your contribution to the relationship. Because it's you who's having your life, right? You can't do the other side of the relationship, but you can feel really good about your input into a relationship, your ability to uh, handle communication or handle conflict, to know what to do when things go up, to know how to make yourself feel valued and your partner, or anyone that you have a relationship with for that matter. I've done a lot of work working with teams in different organizations and corporations. There, it's very important to have collaboration skills, just as it is at home. And so we want to open this conversation to any questions of any kind. And um, if there's an opportunity for you to ask your questions, your very specific questions, prior to the call every week. And you just... Whoa, how do we get that in? There we go. Um, you can send me an email to blab at forrelationshiphelp.com, which will give you the opportunity to get your question answered at the beginning of the show so that you don't have to, um, to wait. This is the first in this series of shows, and I'm so glad that Sophia is here, and I hope others will join in um, so that we have your questions to answer prior to the show. And I'll answer the ones that are submitted by email earlier. And for any of you who want to uh, learn more about relationship in general and my work, just go to forrelationshiphelp.com. So I do have three questions today that I, I can start with, and I will do that. Uh, and if you have a question, I'll put it ahead of the queue. So the first question that was sent in says, no matter what I do or say, I'm always wrong. Can this be fixed and what can I do? Well, that's a problem because if you're always wrong, it means there is probably something going on with the other person. They have a need to win all the time. Or if you want to look at it from the other side of the fence, they simply cannot be wrong. So you must be. And I work with a special population particularly, and that is the partners, the exes, the adult children, and coworkers of what I call chronically difficult people. And I coined a term for them, and that term is hijackles. And so you can learn more about that if you have a chronically difficult person in your life. You can sign in there and get 
more information about how to spot a hijackal. That's your free ebook when you sign in there. But one of the hallmarks of a hijackal is a person who cannot be wrong. They simply cannot. And what's going on there is that their their um, upbringing gave them an idea that they must always be on both the offense and the defense all the time to keep themselves safe. And they, they came by that organically. They didn't set out to put up those defenses. It happened early in their life. And they have that set up and they're very fearful that they could possibly be wrong. And so in that case, as this question asks, I'm always wrong. Well, you may be with a person who has those fears that they couldn't possibly allow the conversation to come to their making mistakes. So they're always blaming you. And that's because they are so very fragile. You know, they may look confident, they may look on top of their game, and they may be very successful, but there is a fearful person in there who just simply has to keep their guard up all the time. So they have a double fence up there. They have a great offense and a great defense, always working, because they know that their ego self, their sense of self is so fragile that if anything got through those defenses and offenses, they would be shattered. So what do you do when you're working with a person who or living with a person or loving a person who always makes you wrong? Well, first of all, you have to be assertive enough to look in your in your own behavior and say, am I wrong? Is there something I'm doing incorrectly? Is there something I could be doing better? Uh, did I really offend them in some way? Was I out to offend them in some way? So the first question that you have to pose is to yourself. Did I do something? Because if I did and I can own it, then that's a great assertive step. If after that step you think that you have done nothing wrong, then you want to get more information from the other person. Oh, well, that's interesting. What do you think I did? Or how did you come to that decision? So demonstrate some interest in the person who's always making you wrong. And then after that has been done, then you may have to be further assertive and say, you know, I am not always anything. And I don't think anybody else is. So I'm sure there are times when I'm wrong. And I'm sure there are times when I'm not. I would like us to be able to sort those things out. So you can see that my answer to the question is going in stages. And that's over a little bit of time in the relationship. So this person's question is, can this be fixed? Well, it can be. you can do your best to do your part in fixing it. If the other person has the opening, has the willingness to be able to talk with you well about this, then you are going to have an opportunity to change the nature of the relationship but if the other person is so fearful that it can't even entertain the possibility that they may have made a mistake then you're going to have to look at the relationship in a different light that you are going to have to make a decision about that relationship are you going to stand up to it be assertive and then say no no uh, it's actually untrue. I may not be who you want me to be, and I may not be how you want me to be, but I am not wrong. I am just being me, and here's why I do it, or why I think it, or why I want it, or why I need it. And that's where becoming assertive is important. We don't want to be passive. We don't want to be aggressive. We don't want to be passive-aggressive. But we certainly do want to come to a place in our life where we're assertive. That means that I can speak about myself freely without mentioning anybody else because I deserve to take up space and draw breath. I actually deserve to say who I am, what I think, what I feel, what I need, and what I want. That's simply being assertive. But if I tell someone else they have to do something or they're a particular way, not my job. Not when I'm dealing with adults. Yes, we have that responsibility for when we're raising our children, but not when we're dealing with other adults. 
So in the case and in answer to the question, no matter what I do or say, I'm always wrong. Can this be fixed and what do I do? Follow those steps. Be self-reflective first, check in with yourself, then give the results of that check-in, then be assertive and say, you know, I don't think I'm always wrong. I don't think I'm always anything. Can we talk about this? And see where that conversation goes. That's very important. And it's over time. Sometimes we have this great idea that we're going to do a hit and run. You know, <laughs> maybe you've been in a relationship like that that has, you know, like, I'm out of here. You don't do it my way and I'm out of here. Or you don't do it my way and I threaten to leave. Or it's always the big show, the big, I'm going to make a statement. And that's unfortunate because people who do hit and runs are people who are really afraid of having any deep connection and communication. So if you happen to be in a relationship with someone who's always doing a hit and run, take that into consideration too. And then perhaps for that person, you can say, I really value being with you. I really value your opinion. And I really value our working towards being able to talk well together and resolve our conflicts. It doesn't really help when one of us isn't here because we can't have the conversation that will move us forward. So very important. So I hope that answers that question sufficiently. And the next question that was here, and we have 40 minutes together, so please feel free to ask your questions. And remember, if you have a question that you would like answered in next week's show, just go to, I send an email to blab at forrelationshiphelp.com and give me your question and I'll make sure to have it in next week's show. So the next question is, my partner cheated on me for six months and I just found out. What should I do? Well, that's a huge question. And it begins with an even larger question. And that question is, who are you? Do you know who you are so that you can know how to respond to this question? Because if you really love the other person, and if you really want to be in relationship with them, and you value the relationship, the trust, and all the things that have been forfeited for a few minutes, but you also value finding a way to resolve things, that's one approach. If you are at the end of your tether and maybe you said that if you ever have an affair i will end the relationship then maybe you have to take some responsibility for the fact you just told that person over time that if they needed an exit route all they had to do was have an affair but if you want to work it out and i'm thinking that from this question you probably do because you're asking what do i do so you don't have a cut and dried answer. You're not just out of there. So rebuilding trust is really important, but communicating about what actually was going on. So in this question, the person says that they just found out their partner has been cheating on them for six months. Well, what was going on in your relationship 12 months ago? Where were you headed? What were you not handling? What were you unwilling to talk about? What did you just gloss over and avoid? Was there any denial going on? Always it begins with self-reflection. What was really happening then? And when you think about it, you will realize that perhaps things started to go sideways a little bit and perhaps neither if you wanted to talk about it or you spoke about it briefly and there was shut down. Or you spoke about it and you thought you had it handled and now you find out you didn't have it handled at all. 